Hi, I'm Owen from REST Australia. Thanks for tuning in to the REST Network. Before we get into today's show, there are a few things we have to go over. Firstly, what you're about to hear and see is limited to general information only. It's not personal financial advice like you'd get from a financial planner. Also, performance is not indicative of future performance. That means that anything that's happened in the past, or we say today, is not necessarily going to reflect what happens in the future. Lastly, please consider that any of the guests or myself are featuring on this program may have a financial interest in some of the products or shares mentioned. That's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Kate, welcome to this episode of the Australian Finance Podcast. It is wonderful to be back on. It's been a while since we've been in this room. Yes, it has been at least a few weeks. Today, we're joined by Monique. Monique, welcome. Hi. I'm not used to talking, so I don't know what to say. <laughs> Hi is fine. Hi is fine. So normally, Monique, you're behind the camera. Today, you're in front of it and in front of the mic. We're doing a kind of a new episode format that we want to try out. We want yeah. to get everyone involved and we want to make it a bit more casual. So, Kate, tell us a little bit about this new format. Yeah, I think we often take ourselves really seriously. Um, <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> a yeah. little bit, yeah. yeah. Um, and I just wanted to bring a bit of the reality of the conversations that we have in the office and with our friends and family about personal finance and investing in the resources because we're always sharing cool resources we find with each other. We're discussing things that are happening in the news, but we don't really bring that to the podcast that often because sometimes it's very topical or it's just sort of like one or two short things. So we thought we'd round them all up and give you an episode once a month where we just share some of the like our favorite personal finance books that month. Maybe we've seen, we want to discuss something that's happened in the news that's really relevant to people's finances. Maybe there's some Rask news to share. Yes, um, as there is today. Yeah, so feel free to send anything our way that we might be able to share with listeners, whether that's resources, uh, tools. Maybe you found a really cool new podcast. I've been listening to a few financial true crime stories oh, recently. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we just sort of round up some of the things we've been sort of watching, seeing, reading during the month, things we've been talking about in the office and yeah, any news to share. Cool. So it's a bit more laid back for people. Yeah. And, as um, laid back as we can get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it this can be like, we could go pretty broad. It's not necessarily like normally we zoom in on one topic, mm. but today some of our own things to the table and they're not necessarily like hardcore investing, hardcore personal finance, they can be more like, I guess, holistic and just yeah. look at everything. Um, we're also going to talk about some of our new partners that we've got on the podcast series. So if you've won advertising on the podcast, we haven't really done that in the past. We'll explain why we're doing that and how we're doing it and probably why it's different to most other podcasts in the space. Um, but Monique, just to confirm for people, people may have heard you before, but you are not a quote unquote finance person, right? No. So pretty much before this job, um, I've been freelancing most of my work life, I guess, um, mostly mm -hmm. as a live music photographer um, and videographer and mm -hmm. editor. So that's kind of my world and where I come from. Yep. So you have like your own Instagram page where you share um, all of your photos yep. from gigs and that sort yep. of stuff as well. At right? Monique Pitsica Media. Yeah, Monique Pitsica Media. <laughs> yeah, we'll put that we'll, in the show notes because you will not be able to spell that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so Monique. If you want a non-finance follow, Monique yeah. does Mon not talk about finance on her Instagram. No, yeah. so. no, not at all. <laughs> Lots of good shots of bands and, and gigs yeah. around Melbourne. So, yeah. if and you're Monique interested. And Monique keeps it real for us, you know. That's it, We don't yeah. get too tied up because. Yeah. That's it, yeah. I'm very good at changing the subject. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's good because um, it's good to have you on the show because Kate and I do get bogged down in the finance things. Mm. And Monique's often. also a lot um, earlier on in her investing journey. So Very it's true. good to have someone to ask us different questions. Yeah. yeah. When we were at the Perler event uh, not too long ago, uh, I did bring you up and you were, th you know, um, I guess, thrust into the spotlight for a few <laughs> minutes because you did make an ETF investment. Yes. Your very first one. Yeah, yep, I did. I did. Do you know, what, do you remember which, which one it was? Um, it's the IOZ. IOZ. Don't, don't ask me anything more about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So that's the ticker symbol. So that's the... Uh, that's the symbol which Monique looked for in the brokerage account and clicked buy. Yeah. So that's my very first one. And I haven't looked at it in a while, so maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should check in on it. Yeah. So maybe not this week. It's not one that we recommend. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit of a wild week for us this week on the stock market. So let's not go there. Um, okay. So we're going to bring a couple of things to the table each just to talk about. Yeah. So, Kate, 
you yeah. first? I think what I've been learning about a lot this month is at the very start of the property buying process. So I don't know why in my head I thought this was going to be really easy. It doesn't sound like it should be easy. Like you're buying this massive, mm. potentially massive asset, the biggest thing you could you've ever, ever bought. Um, and you're taking on a huge amount of debt, much bigger than my hex debt. Mm. Um, but I don't know. I just thought it'd be a bit more straightforward. But there's so many steps to the process, so many questions to ask. Even going to inspections is mm. really exhausting. I went to a couple on the weekend and just the whole like, getting there, making sure you're there at the right time, finding the location. Mm. Then you've got the pre-chat and the post-chat with the agent. They're taking your number, then they're calling you. Yeah, they yeah. follow up for the next like month. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a few uh, unread messages there from, from the weekend. But I don't know, it, just, um, it takes a lot more time than I expected. Mm. Um, I don't know what I was basing that on, but I think a lot of people we'd spoken to said pre-approval was like really simple, but there's actually quite a few things you have to go through and you've got to find the statements and it's a bit of admin. Yeah. But it's also, um, it's only simple if you've got a simple situation. Yeah. Right. I remember when, I think what you might be basing it on is the comparison to shares where you can sign up for a brokerage account within like <laughs> five minutes Yeah. and you can be ready to trade in a day. Whereas with a property, it takes typically many months. Yeah. And I guess that's because with shares, typically you're using your own money. Yeah. Whereas in this process, most of us and I am are trying to get a loan as well. Mm. And then you also got to, there's this physical property and you're like, well, what's this crack? Is this going to end yeah. badly or not? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just at the very beginning now, but that's uh, been a fun experience. It's taking a lot of time. Did you, um, did you like organize to get any of them inspected or did you just, is this more like preliminary? Oh, just very early. Still yeah. going through the, okay. just sort of figuring out what's out there and bedroom sizes, like even just like looking at the floor plan. I'm like, well, what does that mean? How big of a bedroom does one need? Yeah. Like what is too small? What is big enough? Like all those sort of things. It's just like storage. Storage is important. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know you're suffering from oh lack of storage in your place. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you, did you end up, so Monique did buy a place, what was it uh, 12 months ago? Yeah. Yeah. Did exactly. You, yeah. Did you end up figuring out if you could store stuff in the ceiling? Yeah, I think I can. It's just a matter of actually doing it and getting someone out to help me do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've got like a manhole situation at the moment. Um, that like it's the whole roof so there's so much storage up there so hopefully yeah, right. i can actually get that done soon yeah that's <laughs> are the like, things you put in storage they're ever going to come back down they're just going to live there forever yeah i think i have to like turn it because i've got a lot of clothes so i need to be one of those people that bring out the summer wardrobe when it's summer and then put it away oh, yeah. bring out okay. the winter wardrobe yeah. yeah otherwise yeah it's it's kind of a mess at the moment i just imagine things <laughs> go in attics and never come yeah. out yeah like yeah. all the children's toys and like things from when you were like 10 <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah the crafts so many crafts so yeah. many <laughs> so so yeah you could just put your winter wardrobe up there or your summer wardrobe exactly. up there yeah, yeah vacuum right. pack it all and shove it up there and then when it's winter bring it back down yeah we used to we used to use all of that space when i was growing up yeah that was the best place you could actually stand up in our roof because we had a really oh, high pitched cool. ceiling yeah so you, we just got when we got the house renovated we just got to put chipboard flooring down just yeah. like old sheets of flooring and then um you could, it was like bigger than a lounge room up there. So you could just go up, store everything up there. Mm. So much free space to do things with. So you might have like an untapped asset yeah. in your ceiling. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And then hopefully, I don't know, who knows, that might like add more value to the place in the end. There you go. You never <laughs> yeah, know. You could sell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sell when it, yeah. Kate comes and inspects it, you could <laughs> yeah, be like, exactly. and check out the <laughs> manhole. Oh my God, perfect. But yeah. these are things you don't think about at the start. Like I remember, I remember Amy in our property course was talking about like writing your wish and your want list and your must haves. And I wouldn't have thought about storage yeah. and even which direction the property faced. Because when I um, spoke to one real estate agent, they're like, what, what way do you want your windows? Do you want North facing? And I was like, uh, I don't know. And yeah. they said, oh, I can tell you're at the very beginning of this. <laughs> uh, okay. So they knew. <laughs> yes. There's a telltale they sign. They knew. I did okay. not know what way. Apparently, there's a certain way. I think it's north-facing people like. I, I'm going to say yes. Yeah. I don't know because I didn't think about it that I much either. I might have stuffed it up. I was yeah. just happy I to buy know. the okay. house that I did. Yeah. And I was like, yes, I like it. Good. <laughs> yep. That'll um, do. <laughs> yeah. But I think you're right. Like like sunsets and sunrise are very important, particularly if you want some like entertaining space you don't want it to be on the cold side of the building where it only gets sun in the morning right so yeah. lots of considerations so I'll, I'll bring you an update next month yeah <laughs> yeah we can play along as kate goes on a buying journey yeah okay so mine is actually related to this so i might just talk about it um which is just interest rates and inflation it's more a finance thing but it's relating to property because we've got a loan on our house um 
it's interesting that a lot of people would be thinking about this right now because we haven't, even though we saw interest rates go up recently, a lot of people that own a home have probably been looking to refinance or to um, save to get a better rate now. They think, well, why don't I lock in my interest rate now before the interest rates keep going up? The problem is the banks have already adjusted. So they were pretty quick this year. Yeah. So they've already adjusted everything. So um, our interest rate on our mortgage, we have it split. So we had most of it was fixed for three years when we got it. And then part of it was um, variable because then we could have the offset account attached to that. And um, I spoke to our mortgage broker at Wealthful, which is Ben Sum. And Ben basically said, listen, no, and if you wanted to refinance now, you should think again because your fixed rate still has like a year and a half to go on it. And it's so much lower than anything you can get in the market right now. So he's like, just stay, keep it there for as long as you can. You could maybe look at adjusting that other little smaller part, which is the variable bit. Um, but one thing that we're doing at the moment is actually refinancing the house. So, sorry, like revaluing the house to determine, so the bank can determine how much equity we have in it. Because then we might be able to, if house prices fall, we might be able to use that equity to buy another house if prices fall. So it's like kind of going on the offensive instead of the de- defensive, whereas a lot of people would be thinking about, okay, let's reduce our rate, which is obviously if anyone can do that, if they can, like think about that now. What a great statement. Anyone can do that if they can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like like if, if, if you're in a situation like where you can refinance or you can like negotiate a better rate, you can do that now. Yeah. Um, whereas in my situation, um, we couldn't really because we're already in a, a really good rate. But um, if you... Like we've then decided, okay, well, maybe we can refinance and either we draw that equity out of the home to do an upgrade or we could even have an, like make an investment. So it's early days yet, but that's kind of where um, There's one final thing that I wanted to say about this, which is just that um, we did a property episode, I think it was like 20, it was June, 2020. So that's like, what's that? Like nearly two years ago now. And at the time the Commonwealth Bank some Commonwealth Bank analyst was quoted as saying house prices were going to fall 32%. That didn't happen. No. Prices went directly in the opposite <laughs> direction. They went up in some places like 35% in a year. And that I bring that up because that's just a reason just to be wary. Like I was freaking out about higher interest rates because it's a big loan. Monique, you've got a property, Kate, you're about to get one. You're thinking, like I did the calculation before if you go from a 2.99 percent interest rate to a 4.99 percent interest rate which is what some people expect it's 500 dollars a month extra so you go from 2100 a month to 2680 so it's yeah five there's or been a lot of bucks. headlines about that recently in the news about australians at the risk of defaulting on their mortgage because interest rates increasing mm. there's been a lot of like really scary headlines yeah there has been and the thing to remember is that for all of those headlines there's another headline which is Australians have saved more money than ever before because of COVID and many Australians are actually ahead on their mortgage. So there's, yeah, of course there are going to be people that $500 is going to really hurt an extra 500 bucks a month. is going to really hurt, but for many people it won't. So that's important to remember too. So I know this is a finance thing, but you asked me to pick something and I couldn't really <laughs> think of anything, but I was thinking about this because it's on the, like the tips of everyone's tongue. When I was away in Noosa over the weekend, we're talking about how crazy house prices are up there, like absolutely wild. And the Uber driver was like, yeah, like some of these houses are selling and even the locals are like, this is just madness. Yeah. Um, and typically areas that are on coast or like where investments or second houses are go down the fastest. So it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting space to watch over the next little while. That's my one. That's what I brought to the table. Yeah. Not, not that interesting, but uh, Monique, you've definitely- Well, I think it affects a lot of people. It interest does. Interest rates and increasing yeah. mortgage repayments. So. Yeah, it definitely does. So if you're out there and you're stressing out, don't worry, you're not alone. There are things you can do. So yeah. Monique, what about you? What do you got? Yeah, mine's really random, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so I actually came across it a couple of weeks ago. Um, like when you're in the gig economy, you don't really- know what to charge when particular jobs come your way yeah um i find like all in my circle of friends um like it's just an ongoing thing we're always asking each other and sometimes they're a bit funny about like asking uh telling you like what they actually charge what their rates are and stuff so i found this cool little it's almost like a spreadsheet um 
we're from people all around the world. So you can even compare to people who like do photography in New York, if you if you want to, mm-hmm. um, see how much they charge. Um, so yeah, if a job comes your way, you can refer to this spreadsheet. Um, and it's cool. It's not as if you have to copy them or anything, but it's just to give you your your own idea of a range of like what to charge for what job when it comes to yeah, like photography, videography, graphic design. I think I saw one like something about brand management in there. So mm-hmm. there's a really wide range of yeah. um, creatives in there. Here's one, um, freelance designer in New York. Um, they do animation and graphic design. Um, they did a lo- this specific job was a logo design for a podcast. They charge 40 bucks an hour. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and you can see like male, female experience, whether it was remote or in person, like yep. this, what, nearly 9,000 people have put something in here yeah what was the website um it is freelancingfemales.com yeah okay. that's cool i'll make like, sure that's in the show notes yeah. yeah i think that's great because um like say if you're going to a gig and someone's asked you to do a shoot for a few hours like what do you charge yeah mm. yeah there's like i never respond straight away because it's, it's always slightly different in the job um so you don't it's not as if you have your like fixed rates at all it's very unique to each job that comes your way so you really do need to think about it and be like, oh, is it too little? Is it too much? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and you wouldn't know if you're conf- – you wouldn't be confident unless you had something to back it up to be like, this is yeah. like my experience and this is how much I've charged in the past or here's what other people do. Exactly. Yeah. So Totally. Cool. I like it. Yeah. That'll make life easier for a lot of people that – not just in creative space but just across everything there. Yeah. There's like a lot of design work in here as well. Yeah, there's heaps in there. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, and there's a lot more websites and resources popping up where people are actually doing this similar thing for their jobs and so you yeah. can actually see what people are being paid and even mm. I know some firms are starting to be a bit more transparent, especially in Australia, about the numbers and what salary bands different jobs and roles fall into, which is – it's good because then you've got some knowledge to go into those salary negotiation conversations with. Yeah, totally. Rather than just going in blind, going, oh, this is kind of the ranges I'm seeing on Seek for a similar role. So that's all I've got to go off. Yeah. At least here you can point to someone and be like, this is what they charge. Yeah. This is what I did the average of this. And yeah, here we go. That's yeah. cool. I like it yeah. because there are so many gig economy workers in Australia. Yeah. I mean, if anything, it just gives you that little bit more confidence to charge what you want to charge because, yeah, sometimes you just don't have the confidence to put yourself forward and be like, nah, I want this much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you'd, you'd know that if it's like, say someone's charging $50 an hour mm. and, but you're desperate for work. So you might be like, okay, I know that maybe I could push for 50, but I'll say I'll do it for 40 because I want the work yeah. or something like yeah, exactly. this. So you just have some type of like reference point for your negotiation. Mm, yeah, totally. Yeah. And also if they say no to what you asked for, it doesn't necessarily mean your rate was too high. Yeah. It might just be them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They have no budget. <laughs> yeah. So I guess well, that yeah. stops that's most you. of the time, no budget. <laughs> <laughs> no budget, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. Okay, that's great. And I think you've got another one for us. This one's a bit more. This one was another random one. I think one of my friends actually um, forwarded to me um, last week as well. Um the government's giving like a, like a, it's almost like a grant if you compare your energy prices mm-hmm. um, <laughs> to any household. So it's not as if like you need to be on a concession card or anything. It's like literally anyone. So I think it starts from next month and each household gets like $250. Oh, cool. So yeah. from June, it's 250 bucks. This is the Victorian government. Yep. So 250 bucks if you compare your energy providers. That's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, right, here we go. Sorry, I just saw it on the website. From July 1st. There you go, From July, July 1st. 1st. The yep. new financial year. Um, and yeah, it's as simple as it is. Cool. Yep. I wonder if there are any more of those around other states. If you are listening to this and you're from a different state, please write in and let us know because we will feature them next month. Um, why not? Free money. Okay. So just to recap there, Kate's on a home buying journey. She's <laughs> early in that sta- in that yep. phase of her life. Lots of, it's, t- of steps to go. It's exciting, but can be stressful. Um, interest rates are going up or have gone up. So people are quietly freaking out. Um, you can look at getting your house revalued. You can compare your rates. You can use any of the websites or just call the bank itself. Um, and just try and be aware, of, uh, be wary of those headlines that try and catch us out. And Monique, you've got two things for us, which was a rate sheet for gig economy workers, web designers, graphic designers, so on and so forth. And also from July 1st, if you compare your energy, save 250 bucks. Yep. Pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> okay. So the d- second part of this podcast, which is more the formal parts of the business, uh, of the of the podcast, sorry, is just talking about some things that we've been working on behind the scenes. Yeah. So Kate, maybe I'll throw it over to you. 
people would have heard we've got some advertisers on the show. What's that about? Yeah, so if you've been listening in the last couple of weeks, you might have noticed we've got some new ads at the start and the end of the podcast. So that is part of our sort of efforts to make sure that we're partnering with great companies and we're also making sure this show is really sustainable long term um, Mm -hmm. and we can keep bringing you lots of great free courses. We've got some more on the way, free podcast episodes, source high quality guests, Mm -hmm. produce high quality episodes (laughs) and just like keep great stuff coming your way. So we've actually, um, yeah, partnered with a few companies that I'll, I'll sort of break down in a moment, but I think it's probably a good idea just to talk about like, why we've taken on some partners. Yeah, sure. So um, we've historically never really partnered with anyone other than ETF Securities. And that just kind of came out of, we just spoke to them and mm. they were interested and we were interested. Um, and we get a lot of approaches from different advertisers, like a lot. Um, they just send in random emails and they'll be like, hey, did you want to do this? This is a crypto thing coming up. There's this new brand of underwear or whatever. Like it's just totally random. And like most of them, well, at least all of them basically up until now have said no. So we thought, well, let's actually do something with the podcast. It probably takes us at least, what would you say, like eight hours of effort to produce one podcast of an hour's yeah, it's length. quite a lot of work. Yeah, at least. So um, people don't think that. They think they just you just rock up, hit record, and you walk away. <laughs> it, t- it takes a lot. Like we've got the three of us. Then we've got obviously the guests and all their talking points. And then we've got creative stuff like social media, all of that sharing stuff, emails that we prepare to send out to our mailing list. And well, the list goes on and on. That's just the podcast. And then we've got on the education side, we've got free courses that we've been doing for years. Um, and basically having sponsors or partners on to advertise on the podcast are a way for us to monetize and then pay for all of that. So by bringing these sponsors on, we're not going to be retiring early. We can say that much. Um, we're not going to be, um, you're not going to see I've us. I've still got a few years before 40, Owen. Yeah, yeah true, <laughs> true. Yes, you do. Um, we're not going to be driving down uh, Collins Street in Melbourne or something like or George Street in Sydney with a Lamborghini or something because of these advertisers. This is like our attempt just to make things sustainable, as you said. And so we plan, our, our plan is just to have a maximum of two advertisements at the start of the show and there would probably never be more than two at the end of the show. So... And that's and not, none during because none that during really annoys me when I listen to other podcasts. Yes, yeah. You're walking along, enjoying the show, and then bam. Yeah, that's mid-roll. it. Mid-roll. Yeah, I think Tim Ferriss does a good job of this, if anyone listens to that. Um, his are quite long at the start. Ours aren't anywhere, anything like that. But um, the way we think about it is like if we've got good partners that can bring something to a community, whether that's they've got good guests, which we'll go through in just a sec, or they can offer our community something for free or help them in some way. Like if you're already investing, can we make that cheaper for you? Um, when we do events, get some support for events because they take a lot of effort and time. So all of these things, it's kind of like if we can find groups that work want to work with us and educate people, then why yeah. wouldn't we? And I think the other important thing that I want to add about the partnerships is they're just sort of a flat fee so if we give you um if we can give you a special code to get a discount or some extra brokerage credit or something like that we're not getting a sort of volume based commission based on that it's just completely flat fee there's no sort of kickbacks per code usage which we've made sure of so if you use a code and get a special discount we don't get anything for that individual thing it's just a clean flat fee yeah it's just for them to know where you've come from and also to get the perk yeah so we have always been in the business of like education and memberships. So this is kind of new to us. And when we came into it, we really didn't want to have an advertiser this month, an advertiser next month, because quite frankly, we don't want to do that. Like we, we're not searching for the highest paying advertiser. We're not really interested in that. We are all of the partners that we bring on, we want to stay on permanently, like for long periods of time, like years, hopefully. So for us, um, we don't need to do those volume-based things. Um, and that can add a different layer of complexity to like the marketing and whatever. And we don't really want that. So keep it simple. Um, and it, we just try and bring things from them to you. That's basically it. Yeah. So um, yeah, if you want to have a look at all the partners, you'll find And then in the podcast description, there'll be a link to that platform. Yeah. So it's pretty easy to find. 
Um, and if you want to learn more about them, you can. Yeah. And that's basically it. And obviously it helps us if you do go there and you do use the code that we set because then they know that it's worth advertising with us. And that's that's basically how it all comes together. So let's introduce some of them, Kate. We've got, we'll spend a, just a couple minutes on each, but um, why don't we start with Perla? Yeah. So our first partner for the finance podcast is Perla. So they're our broker partner. So mm-hmm. Perla is, I mean, we've talked about Perla in one of our brokerage comparison episodes before but Pella is they make investing simple it's a way to buy your Australian and US shares and ETFs Um, I think they're about $6.50 in brokerage at the moment flat fee and Mm -hmm. even cheaper if you prepay it but one of the cool things is that you can actually automate your investments so instead of having to manually go in every second month when you've hit your thousand dollars to place your buy order for the next ETF you can automate it so um, your portfolio automatically invests that $1,000 um, into an ETF when you um, when X amount of rules are triggered. So you can mm. set all of this in your portfolio. You can set your goals. Um, and they've got community features as well. And I think they just they keep it real. And yeah. instead of like um, the other brokers that are very corporate, Perla is more human focused and focused on their user, which is really different and refreshing approach. Mm. So one of the things that we like about Perla is basically that ability to automate and once you automate, then you can basically just set those long-term goals in motion and things can just trickle into the account, trickle into the stock market or wherever you're investing. And the fact that it's flat fee makes makes it really transparent as well. Yeah, we, we know that about it's like, automating the good stuff in your finances yeah. and this is one way to do it. Yeah, we know that time in the market is what's really important, not timing the market, but time in the market and staying invested for long periods of time is... Of, um, yeah. Perla on as our partner on the Australian excited Finance to Podcast. Share some more of their guests on the show, and they've got some great data on mm. ETFs and what people are buying and selling. So we get to have a bit of a look behind the scenes during our ETF episodes, mm-hmm. um, and also they're going to help you as well. So normally you would be able to use the code RASK R A S K to sign up and get ten dollars of Perla. They call it Perla credit, but it's essentially money that you can use to offset against the cost of brokerage. So, cool. um, but during May, um, they're actually giving you fifty dollars of Perla credit if you sign up using the code RASK. So, so yeah, that will cover quite a few purchases of yeah. your ETFs. So yeah, I think you have to use that in the first six months of signing up to the yeah. platform. But yeah, basically you can join, get free brokerage for a limited number of trades. Um, and there's also to, to celebrate us launching with Perla. Um, you can go in the drawer to win $1,000 as well, already funded in your Perla account. So um, all you've got to do is sign up in May using the coupon code RASK and place a trade, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, make your first investment. And you go in the drawer. It's pretty simple. And you'll see it on social media as well. So um, get around it. Um, comment your friends in if you if you think that they would be interested or they're new to the platform. Monique, I know you checked out Perla even before I'd heard of it. (laughs) You, You were like... Oh yeah, I was on there the other day. Yeah, yeah, I was when like, well, I still don't really know much, but um, <laughs> it was the first like account I opened um, just to just to have a look. And the one thing that I liked the most about it is that you can see other people's portfolios. Yeah. So someone like me, no idea about anything. Um, <laughs> like I just saw the people on there and how they like even structured their portfolio and what they liked and stuff. And then yep. that kind of gave me like, oh yeah, maybe this one's good. I'll have a look at it. Yeah, yeah have a look at that. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't necessarily have to like do exactly what they're doing, but you yeah. can just look at what other yeah. people have been doing is yep. kind of like ideas for you to go and research. Yeah, Inspiration. Cool. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. And we'll have a profile as well that people can follow along. So I'll include that in the show notes as well. Cool. Um, so it's kind of like Twitter, but for finance. Yeah. You can follow people's portfolios, which is kind of cool. Yeah, cool. So that's Perla. Um, you'll find the links in the show notes. Uh, the other one that we've brought on recently, um, so these are both in addition to ETF Securities who have been our long-term partner of the show and they've appeared on the show a few times, as you know, Yep, which um, is great. You might know them for the gold ETF. They've got a few others. Yeah, the FANG Plus ETF. Uh, there are heaps. So they're specialists uh, in those like Uh, commodities focused ETFs but also with thematic ETFs so they've done a great job with those Um, but the other one that we've brought on is InvestSmart so InvestSmart is a different brand for a lot of people it's for our demographic at least for an older demographic it's very very popular and that's because some of the names there are Paul Clitheroe, Alan Collar, um, Effie Zayos so many fantastic names at InvestSmart they've kind of grouped these you know big big wigs of the industry yeah. together and brought them all into this one platform called InvestSmart. Mm. But the other reason you might not necessarily know InvestSmart is because they operate under different names. Yeah. 
One being the Intelligent Investor, which is an investment research uh, subscription service. Yeah, so they, I think they've got over 10,000 members. Yeah, they um, do, yeah, they big. Even, like my mom was a subscriber back in the day. They've been around for decades. Yeah. Um, but they do ASX share research. So if you want to know what their thoughts are on BHP or Telstra or Fortescue, you can actually go in and read their analyst research on those companies and get the buy, hold and sell stuff. Yeah, and they're really good. So they've got like Gaurav there as well, um, Nathan Bells, and like they're, all of these people have fantastic profiles and they're all inside intelligent investor or working for various parts of the business. Then we have the Eureka Report, which is also owned by InvestSmart. So that's where Alan does a lot of his bidding. Yeah, um, and they've got economist updates. They've got a lot of information for people that run self-managed super funds, getting the experts in. Mm. They talk about fixed interest. So some of the stuff that's maybe slightly older demographic, but it brings a really different perspective and a whole lot of different experts. Lots of experience. They even have yeah. a futurist that writes some columns for them, which oh, really? is kind of cool. Yeah. That. Okay. So the other thing that they do, which is something that's – becoming more interesting and was really appealing to us is actually under the InvestSmart banner, they offer products that are more focused on ETF investing and you can choose diversified portfolios or single kind of asset class or types of investments uh, within that and they call them PMAs. Um, so if you if you Googled InvestSmart PMA, it would come up. And the idea is that it's kind of like an automated solution for you. And the really interesting thing which I think is still unique in Australia, I don't think anyone else does this, is they cap the fees. Yeah. So you could have, say, a million dollars or you could have 100,000. I think that's where the the line is drawn, 100,000. It's the same fee. So it's all like automatic, like you can just dollar cost average into it, does tax reporting, customized portfolios. So it's pretty cool. We, We looked at doing something like this ourselves and we couldn't. Yeah, it was just going to be too it. many costs and layers and yeah. complexity, but they've got the team to run it. And I think it's really good for people getting started who maybe don't want to build the ETF portfolio or the investment portfolio themselves. You can actually just use a low cost solution. We've talked about a couple of other robo advisors in the past, but I think InvestSmart's probably not as not heard of as much. Yeah, at least not in this, not in our community. Yeah. Because, and the thing is, they, they probably should be because they have low fees. They have an experienced team. Yep. They do all. It has all the same functionality as Get your all. own holder identification number. Yep. all those sort of things. So it's got all of the things you would you would want. Um, and it's run by people with experience. And it's ASX listed. Investment is actually on the on the stock exchange itself. Yeah. So it's you know it's like it's audited. It's properly checked all all the balances. Um, so it's a it's a really good partner. Yeah, and like they've got a lot the of experts. So we're hoping um, to bring some of the experts onto the show for different episodes. So bringing yeah. some of the analysts in because I know listeners love uh, episodes on shares yeah. um, and maybe even Effie Zahos. I've spoken to her before yeah. and she's fantastic, especially um, talking about all things personal finance. Personal finance, finance so yeah, she's great. wonderful. Yeah, cool. And so you can stay tuned because we are going to do a giveaway for InvestSmart and um, bring – those guys together with us um, and we're going to do a bit of a giveaway kind of like we've done with Perla maybe in a slightly different way we might give away some in- intelligent investor subscriptions or things like that so stay tuned on our socials but also on the podcast because we'll be announcing that in the next month uh, yeah. and so this is, this lots is of op- exciting developments yeah. but yeah. Um, hopefully it means good results for listeners getting extra um, special deals um, I know there's a discount for intelligent investor if you subscribe using the code RASK R-A-S-K as well yep. um, and just bring a free trial yeah, as well. more yep. guests more experts for events that we're really hoping to run later in the later half of this year yeah so this is always part of it bring like by us making the podcast more sustainable we can get bigger guests to the show like international guests Aussie guests people that maybe didn't have an incentive to, to join us for a conversation now can and so this is our attempt to try and get that scale to bring them to you um, and it also allows us to do episodes more like this where we can be a bit more casual so <laughs> Why don't we um, leave listeners with something a little bit more interesting, which is a little bit spicy, this one, Kate. Um, yeah. A financial advisor turned someone's foot appearing on the beach. I don't know if she was ever a financial advisor, but she was pretending to be one. Okay, but, but um, we'll, say, we'll say pretending to be, allegedly pretending maybe to be a financial advisor. Yeah, I mean, I haven't finished the whole podcast series, so we're, yeah. I'm not up to date. But um, there's a podcast produced by the Sydney Morning Herald and The Age called Liar Liar. And it's about Melissa Caddick, who uh, fleeced friends and families um, for, out of like 30 plus million dollars, wow. posing as a financial advisor who was opening them ComSec accounts and trading on their behalf. Not that she ever did any of that. Um, and she was funding a very high... Um, 
flying lifestyle. But the story is just, there's so many twists and turns. Right. Um, I think it's probably a very lighthearted take on a very serious topic. Um, and it's probably reflected in the reviews of the podcast. Um, they are very, they take it very sort of lighthearted. And I think it's a very serious matter. But I think it's important. Uh, one, it's a bit of entertainment in of sorts, but mm. it's a good reminder that you want to actually check these things. So if someone's opening a Comsec account for you, which you really should open directly yourself, a brokerage account, mm. um, and placing trades, like you should actually check these things yep. um, and check that you actually, the number exists and checking, well, she was giving a AFSL number, but it was for someone else. So actually checking all of these numbers, you can, the Money Smart website has an an advisor search so you can actually search the name you can search the numbers um you can look at their qualifications and all those sort of things but um it just sort of it reminded me to do your due diligence like when we did that fraud episode a few weeks ago about all those tv mm. shows um some of these people were they weren't going looking for crazy results they were just investing like their ten or hundred thousand dollars um like their life savings in mm. some cases um but yeah, it's just be really, really careful. Yeah, it's hard because we say check the AFSL, but the people that do these cons know that that's what you're going to do, right? So yeah. I think that's the thing. Like we saw that with with who the hell is Hamish? Um, and this was a podcast which is based on a very similar thing where they'd get people to invest. They'd give them fake documents that look legit. Yeah, and she was, she was giving fake documents. She reconstructed brokerage statements and all sorts of things like that. Yeah, right. And she but, was charging management fees and all sorts of things. Yeah, so you wouldn't even need to charge a management fee, would you? Yeah. When you think about it, you wouldn't need to charge a fee at all because you're getting the money. But it nothing. was more legit because she was charging a management <laughs> yeah, fee. Yeah, right. So. Okay, so she made it look like she's, she benefited in some way. Yeah. Um, also, uh, if your financial advisor takes more photos of themselves in the gym – then at the office, that's probably a concern too. So yeah. um, keep that yeah. in mind. Yeah. Um, so that it, I think it was a quite a good podcast series to sort of open your eyes to that. Mm. Um, but it is a very lighthearted take on a serious matter. Like okay. A lot of people did lose their life savings. So yep. I think it's just you always, always need to ask questions. Um, so yeah. those are like trust but verify. Trust but verify. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, and you've also read a book, Die With Zero. Yeah, another interesting book. Another it's great, a, um, lighthearted uh, Yeah, this was title. not about like dying with zero by getting scammed. It was more about structuring your life in a way that you didn't end up with all of your assets at the end of your life and no memories. And it was really thinking about memory dividends and sort of the experiences you have earlier in your life actually pay off over the decades. You might retire with a million dollars, but if you haven't, you might not be able to do the things you wanted to do because you're not well enough, you're too frail. So it's yeah. actually making sure you use your money as you go through life. Mm. Um, and it's just, a, I mean, the book could have been written in a few pages, but uh, <laughs> I thought it was a good, a good eye opener and a refresher. Like you would have to have some investing sort of basic knowledge to yep. read this book and have it be worthwhile. But I thought it was a good discussion starter as well. And it's been mentioned a lot on, yeah, it's um, so Die With Zero is the book. Um, first few pages. You probably get it from the library. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But it was good. Or read like a review. <laughs> like it could be summed up in a few pages. What are those? Yeah, like you get those short notes, like the books that are only like 10 pages. Yeah. Uh, summaries of like the big books. Or Blinkist. And Blinkist, like that. yep. They'll do it I for do you. I do think a lot of personal finance books could be written in a few pages. Yeah, but you know why? It's because the personal finance book publishers tell you you have to write uh, pages. Yeah. Well, people don't want to pay $20 Because they're not going to pay 20 yeah. So you, they force you to write more, which is, yeah, like we've talked about this before. You could probably just do it in like 50 pages and done. Yeah. The more personal finance books you read, the more similarities you start seeing between them all. Yeah. Save something, invest it, yeah. enjoy your life. Yeah. There's a lot of similar vibes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've been discovering some personal finance books in your parents' attic recently. Yeah, yeah. The, my parents are doing a big move. So dad's been digging out some books and showing me and brought some in here. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we may have a giveaway courtesy yep. of Monique's dad yep. <laughs> in the Thank next you. few weeks. <laughs> Stay tuned for the uh, latest in uh, property investing from 2007. It's good stuff. It's come out of the attic. But um, just fi one final thing is um, don't, re don't forget the Get Started Investing course. It's free. We launched it in collaboration with Equity Mates. It's available on Rask Education, totally free. As it says on the tin, Get Started Investing, it's after their book, uh, which is a great book. And it can be like a companion for that where you can uh, just take the online course, do the quizzes and just help yourself get confidence to make that first step.
Once you've done that, the rest is easy. Uh, so that's it for today. Yeah. If, you, if you do have anything to share with us, feedback or whatever, you, however we can do better. If you want to get in contact with Monique, Monique not us. Get, get some gig <laughs> photos done. Um, yeah, she's got so a rate yeah. card just so yeah. you know it's fully transparent now. <laughs> um, you can head over to the Rask Australia Facebook page, yep. Facebook page, pardon me, and or community and um, jump in there, say good day, share what you want with us and um, we'll go from there. Yeah, and we'll share the giveaways and the resources we mentioned in today's episode with you there as well. Keep the conversation. Kate, Monique, thanks for joining me on the Strand Finance Podcast. This is fun. You made it. Yay. <laughs> you did it. It's actually a second time podcast start. Oh my God, I've made it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and thanks for listening.